So this is the um, uh, slide showing the balance between the anti-reflex and reflex mechanisms. So anti-reflex mechanism means a mechanism which will prevent the reflex of stomach content reaching the esophagus, which includes intrinsic lower esophageal sphincter, presence of a diaphragmatic crura, then intra-abdomen location of the lower esophageal sphincter, sphenoesophageal ligaments, and acute angle of his esophageal clearance mechanisms. Whereas the reflex mechanisms are because of transient lower esophageal sphinct relaxation, swallow induced LES relaxation, hypotensive LES, and there are other factors like presence of hiatus hernia, increased gastric acid secretions, delayed gastric emptying, and also because of presence of duodenal gastric reflex. So pathophysiology, this is the one which I already explained. So the impaired esophageal clearance, impaired salivary function, etc., will lead to increased presence of acid within the distal esophagus. Hiatus hernia and transient inappropriate relaxation of LES will cause increased reflex of content from stomach into the esophagus. And the other factors will also uh, contribute towards the presence of a reflex. Next slide. So we'll, uh, we'll, uh, de in detail, we'll see what are the anti-reflex mechanisms which will actually protect us from these reflex. So first tired of three tired esophageal difference. First one is, next slide. So this is the uh, image which showing the normal lower esophageal sphincter mechanism. As you can see, the lower esophageal sphincter is one to 1.5 centimeter of the lower esophagus, which is strengthened by the uh, crust or crura of the diaphragm because it is passing through the right crust of diaphragm and it is strengthened by the crural diaphragm. And also uh, we can see a phrenoesophageal ligament which will also tighten the LES and the intra-abdominal position of the esophagus will prevent the reflex of uh, content into the esophagus during increased uh, straining, coughing, etc. Next slide. So uh, the intrinsic lower esophageal sphincter is usually a uh, uh, the onically contracted position, which is made up of proximal 1 to 1.5 to 2 centimeter of the lower LES and also a distal 2 centimeters segment, which lies in the abdominal cavity. The resting pressure is 10 to 30 millimeter, which is a very generous reserve to prevent a reflex from stomach. Next slide, please. Uh, so the LES maintain is high pressure zone mainly by the intrinsic tone of the muscle and also by a cholinergic excitatory neurons. Diurnal variation of basal LES pressure can occur, which is very lowest after a meal and it is highest at night. Next slide. So these are the factors which will change the LES pressure. Hormones like gastrin, motilin, substance B, alpha agonist and beta antagonist can increase the LES pressure. Food like protein, increased uh, um, uh, protein content can increase LES pressure, whereas food which are more in uh, fat and also chocolate, peppermint, etc. can reduce the LES pressure. Next slide. Diaphragmatic crura lies within the hiatus created by the rise, right crust of diaphragm. It is inhibited by esophageal distension, vomiting, and during uh, this uh, transient LES relaxation, but it will not relax during a swallow. The crural contraction, okay, angle of his is the angle. Next slide, next slide. Angle of his is uh, formed by the oblique entrance of esophagus into the stomach, hence it will create a sharp angle at the greater curvature. And this angulation will act as a uh, flap valve mechanism, which will reduce the reflex episodes. So we'll see what are the reflex mechanism which will increase the uh, gastroesophageal reflex disease. Next slide. As I told, there is a physiological process known as transient lower esophageal sphincterization. It is occurring um, normally in everybody. It is a most frequent mechanism which will lead to a reflex. It is transient lower esophageal sphincterization occurs independently of the swallowing. It is not again accompanied by an esophageal peristalsis and usually pers it will persist longer than 10 seconds. And because of this longer duration, this transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation will lead to a reflex episodes. 
So this is the pathway by which the transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation will lead to the uh, reflex. That is, whenever there is any distension, the mechanical receptors which are present in the gastric cardia will get stimulated, and it is through a vagally mediated pathway there will be a relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. Next slide. Next one is a swallow induced lower esophageal sphincter relaxation, which will account for about 5 to 10 percent of the reflex episodes, not like a transient LES relaxation. But here it will um, produce less of reflex symptoms because the crural diaphragm does not relax during this and the duration is relatively shorter. It is around 5 to 10 seconds and reflex is prevented by an on ongoing a peristaltic waves. Next. And the reflex during solo induced lower esophageal sphincter relaxation is more common in case of hiatus hernia because in, in, in patients with hiatus hernia, the uh, OG junction compliance will be very less and the esophageal pressure is very low than the intragastric pressure and there will be free flow of content from stomach to the esophagus. Next slide. Hypertensive lower esophageal sphincter is another mechanism by which it will contribute towards reflux. It can be either stress-induced reflux, where when the patient coughs or sneezes or he stoops over, in which the intragastric pressure will be very high and it will lead to reflux. And there can be free reflux where the LES, is, LES uh, uh, sphincter pressure is very, very low. This is again a low or absent LES pressure similar to uh, the previous mechanism. There will be free flow of first stomach content into the esophagus. Okay, next slide. This is again uh, the uh, mechanism by which a hiatus hernia can lead to a, a reflex mechanism. But in here itself, you can see that the, all the lower esophageal sphincter pressure and the crural diaphragmatic uh, balance, everything has uh, disrupted. So because of the presence of the hiatus hernia, there will be the patient is prone for a more reflex episodes. Next slide. Now we'll see the second tier of anti-reflex mechanisms. Next slide. So this is mainly by the esophageal clearance. Esophageal clearance, it can be a volume clearance in which the actual removal of reflexate material from the esophagus and an acid clearance in which restoration of a normal esophageal pH following an acid exposure can occur. Next slide. So volume clearance is mainly done by peristaltic waves. It can be by a primary peristalsis, which is elicited by a swallowing, and secondary peristalsis, which is initiated by esophageal distension from acid reflux. Next slide. In case of peristaltic dysfunction, so there won't be any strong or an effective peristalsis, or in that conditions, patient can have an increased episodes of reflux, and there will be increased chance of esophagitis. And the next uh, anti-reflex mechanism is salivary and esophageal gland secretions. So saliva and esophageal gland will uh, secrete more of uh, mucin and also bicarbonate, which will also help to neutralize a small amount of acids remaining in the esophagus after several peristaltic contractions. So the importance is that the patients with the low salivary gland secretion, especially in patients with the mixed connective tissue disorders or Jogren syndrome, etc., patient will have an increased reflex episodes and also in the night the salivary gland secretions are reduced and in those patients nocturnal episodes will also be very high. Next slide. Already explained. Next slide. So in addition to saliva, there are many glands which produces aqueous bicarbonate rich secretion in the esophageal submucosal glands, which will also help to dilute the acids which is present in the distal esophagus. 